Juan, thank you. Yes, I'm Dion Hotchkiss with Century Band. Century Band works to keep you safe after the fall. It is a combination of Fitbit meets Life Alert. So it works if you are unconscious, unable to communicate, cannot press a call button, or cannot hear the call box or be heard. We watch so that you don't have to. Jordan developed this idea after his father developed a progressive neurological condition that causes him to fall frequently. And so Eric and Redza are now bringing those ideas to life. And my background is in marketing and tech for startups and consumer products companies. My own mother had a call monitoring system in the last years of her life. She fell many times, often was not able to use it, and so it was useless. My mother-in-law took the garbage out one night, fell, laid outside overnight in the rain. These stories are not uncommon today, but with Century Band, we can make them infrequent. We've done some primary research with caregivers and the adult children of elderly parents, and they confirm for us that Century Band is a product that is needed for people who have medical condi conditions, as you see there on the right. But we've also discovered that there are good market opportunities for those with, who are recovering from acute needs and also long-term chronic diseases and illnesses that give them mobility issues. Currently, case managers are simply not really aware of this broader opportunity. All of the products that are out there currently have several drawbacks, as you can see here on the right, and I've alluded to earlier. They all require that you be able to push a button, and elderly people cannot push a button to save their lives, literally. One of the other problems is that the darn things are just ugly, and they shout, I'm infirmed, and so nobody wants to wear them. But we have found that when people wear an alert system, hospital, hospitalization rates go down. So it's very important to get people to wear them and to be able to use them. We've addressed those with our design. There is no button to push. It is physically different. It is cosmetically different. We've integrated fall detection. And we have one device, one subscription. You are covered whether you are in your house or any place else. And those are all drawbacks in the market currently. <clears throat> We are looking to add predictive analytics as well as we move forward. There are a lot of falls that happen every year, an astonishing number, and it is very expensive to get back up, as you can see. 29,000 older Americans die every year from falls, and the medical expenses just from those deaths, $745 million. We are in a growth market. We live longer. And we will fall. More people will fall more often. So it becomes more and more imperative that we have a better solution than what's out there currently. We need to move fast and capture market share because all of the technology already exists, which means that our competitors could come in at any moment. The US market is 650 million. Our competitors range in size from 30 million to 250 million in annual revenues. We project that we will be at about 125 million when we are at scale. We will do that through Century Band purchases, through monitoring subscriptions, reaching out through referrals and partnerships to the commercial markets, uh, to the health facilities, healthcare facilities. We've roadmapped the next generations of products that will include location alerts, the predictive safety database, as I alerted to with the predictive analytics. We will have push notifications, some rehab capabilities, uh, and these things will also allow us to move into other markets that are unrelated to the medical markets that we've talked about. We're looking right now for $200,000. This will allow us to develop the prototype, to go through the engineering, take us all the way to manufacturing engineering capabilities. It will also allow us to lay the roadmap, or the groundwork, I should say, for uh, the next round of funding and to establish partnerships and pilots. So we have the vehicle, that's our team. We have our destination, that's the product. What we need right now is we need expert navigators and we need the gas to get us to where we're going.
Do you have a picture of the device? Well, that's my version of the device. Okay. Uh, Jordan has, has done much better versions because he has cooler tools to work with. But yeah, yeah um, it's basically, it's a, it's a band that you okay. wear kind of like a Fitbit. Okay, yeah. great. I think it would be really helpful in the presentation to actually show what it is just to give context um, because you said like, you know, with uh, versus life alert, you know, it's I thought that was a great point you made where it's like it's something that kind of screams like I'm infirm and this is something that can be, you know, kind of, you know, less, less conspicuous. So I think that would be a really nice thing to add in there. I've asked for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> great, good. Good, good. Jordan, I need you to do this. Right. Um, it, Couple of other things. I, no, I thought you did a great job of kind of explaining what you are. Um, I really like the Fitbit meets Life Alert. Um, that was a good way to kind of put it in a frame of reference of what we understand. So really, really nice there. Um, one of my big questions was who your target market is, because it sounds like there are lots of them. Like it, it sounds like you're starting with the consumer, you're going direct to consumer, but then there's also the opportunity for healthcare networks to, uh, for like, uh, the healthcare networks or, or PT um, places to have this as well or reimburse for it? Like, how, I was unclear on that. Yeah, currently uh, they're primarily sold direct to consumer, but it might be through a hospital system. For instance, the system that my mother had was purchased and subscription, subscription paid to her hospital system, actually. They have their own. Okay. So, yeah, uh, and some of the competitors have systems that they sell into facilities. So what, what, what is the direction you're planning on going then? All, all three of those markets, the, the acute, the chronic, and the medical conditions, both direct to consumer and to, uh, to the commercial systems, to the healthcare and assisted living facilities. Okay, got it. Um, Potentially nursing homes, we're not sure how strong a market that is. Okay, right. Uh, I, my only, I, I guess, question there, or uh, I guess, cause for concern might be too strong of a term, but um, when you don't have a really uh, clear target and saying, okay, we're going to go after this first, we're going to prove the efficacy uh, with them and then move on to other targets, it, you have this tendency, or at least startups have this tendency to kind of, you know, try and get everything at once and then they're not really focused. Um, and so that might be something that you just want to consider moving forward. Make it clear where we're going to focus first. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and then you mentioned something about predictive analytics. That was just kind of a term that you said you might be using that in the future. What would the predictive analytics be for? The predictive analytics ideally is going to be able to show you what happens before somebody falls. Okay. But it takes a while to gather enough patient data to have that experience for the algorithm to be developed and to work. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't do you any good if when you're like this, the band is telling you, you're going to fall. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. So, okay. yeah. Um, and then that gathers data that you can feed back to the physician to say, um, this person has a newer worsening condition. Also, we think we can do some push notifications with that so that uh, the, one of the biggest contributors to falling is poor balance. Elderly people tend to not recognize that about themselves. They tend to think, oh, I was rushing. I wasn't paying attention. Everything else except my body is failing me. Yeah. Um, but with push notifications, we can say, uh, hey, have you done your balance exercises today? Or send the information to the nurse practitioner or whoever is in charge of that patient to, for them to contact the patient and be talking about this. Yeah. Right. So one of those two ways, but we're not sure which way that'll go. Okay, got it. Great. Great. Good job, though. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I'll echo the my my favorite thing to harp on is uh, use of time, and you were spot on. You even had some extra time, which I was yeah. like, I was just waiting for the thing to go off. I was like, okay, this is so good, but uh, you know, it's going to go off, and uh, and you hit everything that I'm looking for in five minute presentation. You hit it, and with 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 the right amount of detail. Um, like Kat said, you the Fitbit meets health alert, you know, so, okay, bam, I, I know essentially what I'm going to hear about. Um, yeah, I d to the degree that you've, that, is this something that you've created? Like, is, is there a, is there a sentry band out there that, to look at? No, it's, a, it's an idea, which yeah, is fine. It's, yeah, it's an idea at this point, so Eric and Rez don't need to, you know, we need to 
provide them additional funding so that they can go beyond what Jordan has done with his CAD design system, which is basically draw pretty pictures. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. But I, I like it, and I have to, I have to go back to what Kat was talking about. It's, it's because there is no barrier to entry. This is a marketing problem, and you, to the degree that you're successful. Um, you are going to have to pick a lane for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if you pick consumer, you're going to have to, what, what is, what is your special sauce for, I mean, what have you got like three people, you know, it's like, you know, to, to getting it out there, you know, it's like, because it's not like a magic, like, well, we have the best product, so we're going to win. You're like, uh, uh, you're like, you have the best relationships. Like you got it at target, you know, you've got it at, uh, you know, you've got it on the AARP, you know, website, you know, mm -hmm. so you can get to people like me who has a mother who is like, you know, so um, it, it's it's a marketing problem, you know, and then you're getting into um, you need a whiz, you know, someone who is like, you know, cost per acquisition, you know, that's if you go the consumer route. If you're going relationship routes, like who's your big baller like person with all the relationships that's going to get it in there and get the right presentations and drive towards that number. Um, you know, being answering the question, um, you know, oh, we're going to make money in a variety of ways is always a huge red flag for me. I'm like, mm -hmm. pick one mm -hmm. and own it. And you know what? Pick one, own it, fail, move to another one. Right. That's fine. But you can't be sort of, especially with a skeleton crew that you've got and which is mostly around design and whatever. It's like, um, is that all going to fall to you? You know, or is it all going to fall to a, a person that you're going to hire? So. I would, I, I can't put enough emphasis on that. Um, you know, you, you did, you, you were like, here's the market and you said the sense of urgency, but yeah, that, that's what it's all about. You know, and it's and like. you don't have a good answer yet. Right. Whether we're going to focus just on direct to consumer um, or go to the healthcare system. That's why I said we need uh, navigational experts. Yeah. You know, either, either people with bodacious uh, Rolodexes or a marketing whiz who, right. you know, can just I would do it. Try to, that's a unicorn. You, you know, know they, you know, I've been in sales my whole life and it's, you know, know, and I've been hired to companies, you know, they're like, okay, you have a massive Rolodex or you have a massive network, come in and sell my shitty product, you know? And it's like, you know, work my, work your magic, you know, like that's not really a thing. You know, it's, it's really, I would, I would go towards the, the marketing whiz who, can work the numbers and put in the processes and that, that will sell your product, which is really, really cool. But you need this, um, and you, you need that. You, you need to focus on that because the survival of Century Band depends on that. On that. And, uh, and that's where all the stress is. But really great presentation, really cool product. You know, it's like, I mean, as far as like an addressable market, mm -hmm. maybe it's just because I'm personally am in that, you know, my wife's mother and my mother and, you know, it, but I, I feel like, you know, just about anybody can see this and say, oh, I know somebody who needs this. Yeah. yeah. And that's generally what happens. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, my mother or my father or whatever. Exactly. Right. I, yeah. I heard you gasp when I said she laid outside all night in the rain. Yeah. 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 I, I was actually going to mention that. Like, like that's, that's good. good. If you can get somebody to gasp, you're like, hey, I'm paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Cool. Good presentation. Checks in the mail, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's one thing, and I don't even know if it was a slide or just the way it was said, but at, like from an investment standpoint, when you talk about needing to move fast, it sounded a little scary and risky. And instead, like just maybe the way it could have been said, like we can move fast, right, with an investment. Uh, ah. Well, that's kind of how I fall asleep every night, thinking yes. <laughs> yeah. But thank you.